Last week, I shared with you two verses from the Quran. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقَصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ That indeed we will surely test you. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ We will surely test you. Put you to trial with something of fear and something of hunger and loss of wealth, lives and fruits. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And give the congratulations. Give the good news and glad tidings to those الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ Those whom when musibah reaches them, they say, Inna lillahi, indeed we all belong to Allah, wa inna ilayhi raji'un, and indeed we will return to Him. These two verses that I shared with you last week are verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about a very important concept. And that concept is linked with each and every single one of us. A concept that no one can dodge and no one can escape. And it is something that is mentioned in the Quran, not in passing, not a few times, but many times in the Quran. And that is the concept of ibtila. The concept of being put to a test. The concept of musibah. The fact that each and every single one of us in one way or another, at one point and one stage in our lives, regardless of what capacity or circumstances we may find ourselves in, we will be faced with a musibah. Now generally speaking, when we hear the word musibah, we think of it as a huge calamity, as a catastrophe, some type of huge scale disaster. When actuality, the word musibah has been carefully chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it includes all forms of setbacks. Whether they are small or large, all forms of inconveniences. Whether it is related to one person, a person's wealth, or whether it's related to a community or society or a country at large. The word musibah that is used in the Quran so many times, it reflects a certain message. The word musibah, musibatun, it literally means something that reaches its designated target at a specific time, at a specific place, in a specific and designated manner. When that musibah, <coughs> that setback, that difficulty or problem crosses you, it is not related to other things. It stands alone in and of itself. A lot of times we link one bad thing to another and that leads to another bad thing, another bad thing. And then one day if you find yourself, you know, being Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, in actuality, any what we perceive to be series of misfortune are not actually connected to each other. And this meaning of individuality is reflected by the usage of ta at the end of musibah. For those of us who are familiar with the Arabic grammar will understand this very well. So every musibah, every setback is actually in its own something specific that Allah ordained, something specific that Allah decreed for to happen to you without being connected to anything before it or without resulting in anything after it. So as Muslims, we will be tried, we will be tested, we will be challenged. And the way a Muslim is to rise to a challenge, or rather should I say, the way a Muslim should react to the challenge, or any misfortune, or any discomfort, is by making one statement. And that is, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ 
This should be every true believer's reaction at the slightest sign of resistance. Indeed, we belong to Allah and indeed we all will return to Him. If we make a habit of saying this, not just in passing, but if we actually internalize this, then it will make us very praiseworthy in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just think about this statement. When a person truly says, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun, and understands its meaning, internalizes it, it puts everything into perspective. Imagine we had a very important meeting to go to, or a very important event, or we had to get to the airport, and we started having car troubles. How do some people react? They get upset. Man, I shouldn't have got a Ford. No offense. Right? They start slamming the hood. They start hitting the steering wheel. Or if a person's child drops water on their laptop or phone, the, discipline, the disciplinary action that may result from that could be harsh. Why? Because a person owns that car. Because a person, that, that, is, uh, that person is his or her father. When we feel like we own something, when we feel like we are entitled to something, it, changed, it changes the way we react to things. So when you say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, yes, you might be upset. But when you say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, and when you internalize it, it puts everything into perspective. And when you have everything in perspective, it allows you to focus on things that will help you in the hereafter, and not just in the hereafter, but will help you in this world as well. When we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, we are acknowledging Allah's ownership over everything. We are admitting and claiming our humility in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you know what? Everything that is happening is because it belongs to Allah. And I also belong to Allah. Our, our hands, our feet, our body, we didn't pay for these things. We did not earn these things. We, do not, we did not do anything to deserve the faculties that Allah has embedded within our physical being. You may think that, oh, I bought this car, but what about the body that Allah kept physically well and able in order for you to earn that money to buy that car? What if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it away? What if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused some illness in one of our senses or faculties? What would happen? So when you say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, you are acknowledging the greatness of Allah, the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you are admitting your own weakness. And subhanAllah, this is the beauty of the religion of Islam. That within, even within our rituals, and forms of worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again grants us things to do, order the, orders us things to do that remind us of our true position before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are going about our own business, when we wake up in the morning, we woke up. What do we do? We put our head to the ground. It's called fajr. When we are going about our own business, whether it be at school, whether it be at college, whether it be at work, business, whatever it may be, whether just being at home. And we are going about our own business. Allah orders us to remind ourselves to be humble to Him and we put our head to the ground, which is called Zuhr. And then a few hours after, again we remind ourselves. And then when the sun sets, again we remind ourselves. We put ourselves in a position where we acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's might. And we admit to our weakness before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, some of us 
indeed may be going through family problems, problems with their children, with their spouse, with their in-laws, other relatives, business, workplace, job, house, health, or even spirituality. Some, of, some people may even be, or not may even be, are, are suffering from depression. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes makes us go through these things so that He can put it in our heart that we belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe I am going th through this challenge so it could hit me to say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. If we can internalize this, if we make a habit of this, then we will be eligible for the congratulations of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa bashir is sabirin. You know, when your friend congratulates you for something, it 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 means something. You know, it has different meaning. When your parents congratulate you for something, it holds a different weight. When your mentor or your peer, someone you look up to, congratulates you for something, gives you a pat on the back. Tip of the hat, it means something. But for the Prophet ﷺ to congratulate us, it carries a whole different weight altogether. So if we internalize this, we will be eligible for that bashara. And actually there's a linguistic secret behind the usage of bashir as opposed to abshir. Where Bashir means you congratulate somebody because they deserve it. And when a person says, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, when a person acknowledges this, a person becomes worthy of the congratulations of the Prophet. ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها إن ذلك على الله يسير. In another place, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, whatever musiba strikes you, remember the word أصاب من مصيبة. Whatever specific musiba strikes you, في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم, regardless of where it may be on earth, and in your own physical state of being. إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنَّ نَبْرَأَهَا Everything was decreed in a book. Everything has been decreed and destined from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in our life, things happen. Things are happening and things will happen. And they will continue to happen for as long as Allah wills. You know, sometimes we hear when someone young passes away, oh, he had a whole life ahead of him. Oh, he died young. No, he didn't. He did not have a whole life ahead of him. He left when he was destined to leave. He departed or she departed when they were destined to depart. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed all of this. Not everyone lives a long life. And at the same time, not everyone dies young. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا أَصَابَ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Everything happens with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once we have this in our mind that everything that is happening is from the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know how to react now. And subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the reaction of the true believers. In another verse, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا قُلْ Say, O oh, oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا That anything that befalls on us, it does not happen except for the fact that Allah has written it lana for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا Instead of كَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا عَلَيْنَا implies that it is a bad thing. عَلَيْنَا implies that it, it is a punishment. But 
the true believers, what do they say? That everything that happens to us is because Allah has written it for us, as a favor upon us, not as a punishment against us. There's a saying in English that problems are like washing machines. They twist us, they spin us, they knock us around, but at the end of the day, we come out cleaner, brighter, and better than ever before. And we smell, and we smell better. So th this is the meaning of musibah. We should not think to ourselves that going through a setback or going through problems are an indication that Allah is unhappy with us and displeased with us. If that was the fact, there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ashaddu nasi ibtila'an al-anbiya, thumma al-amthal fal -amthal. That the most tests and trials that anyone goes through are prophets. And then those who follow their footsteps and those who follow their footsteps. So if you find yourself against the ropes, it does not necessarily mean that Allah is unhappy with us. And when you have everything going your way, when you have wealth and fame, position and power, that does not necessarily mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is satisfied and happy with you either. And guess what? None of us has the right to judge anyone that way. And this brings me to the second aspect of musibah. You know, at, at, at one side, there are ayat indicating that when a musibah happens, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person should bear with patience. A person should, should say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. But on the other hand, and this shows us the balance of the Quran. Remember, I was talking about the moderation of our religion, the moderation of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are certain verses that indicate that when certain things happen to us, it is a result of what we do. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ That whatever musibah befalls you, it is a result. فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ It is a result of what your hands have earned. فَأَصَابَهُمْ سَيِّئَاتُ مَا كَسَبُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the ظالمين that the evil of their doings caught up with them. وَالَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْ هَاؤُلَاءِ سَيُصِيبُهُمْ سَيِّئَاتُ مَا كَسَبُوا وَمَا هُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ So now what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, in, the, in the beginning verses of the khutbah, Allah said that you know what? Everything that happens is from Allah. And in these few verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that what happens to you is because of what you did. So how do we reconcile this concept? How do we make sense of this? Well, the first thing is that we do not insult anybody. Even though there are things that these verses claim that happen as a result of what we have done, of our own sins, of our own evil doings, as human beings, as the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't have the right to make the call of why this is happening. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to tell these people that this is happening because of what you did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the right to make that call. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is saying this to us. We don't have the right to make that judgment. And sometimes this is heard from people's mouths. Oh, all of this is happening in this country because of their sin. No, we don't have the right to make that judgment. There is one place in the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to tell them that this is your fault. One place. In Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes reference to the story of the battle of Uhud. And for those of us who know, we can jog through our memory, the battle of Uhud resulted in victory for the Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ clearly ordered the archers on certain posts at the mountain, do not leave. Do not leave. No matter what happens, do not leave your post. 
And what happened? When the Muslims, the Sahaba, when they, when they found victory and the enemy started to retreat and everyone started collecting the spoils of war, the archers left their posts and they went to collect the spoils of war. Because you know what? We, we won. It was at, only at that moment in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْتُمْ أَنَّا هَذَا How did this happen? Because as a result of moving from, their fo- moving from their post, the tables were turned for a little while. And they suffered some losses of life and of wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell the, these people are asking, how did this happen? قُلْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِي أَنفُسِكُمْ Tell them it is because of what you did. So, we as human beings don't have the right to judge what someone is going through, whether it's good or bad. We don't have the right to judge whether it's because they're a good Muslim or because they are a bad Muslim. And this is the balance that these ayat show or the balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these verses is teaching us how to take personal responsibility. You don't get to throw everything on Allah. You don't get to lean on Qadr each and every single time. If you're speeding and you're driving like a maniac and you break the red light and someone hits you. Oh, this is a musibah, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. No, you were asking for it. If you are a person who goes to work late each and every single day, and slacks at the office, does not reply to emails, and is always texting and watching YouTube videos, and as a result of that behavior, that person loses their job and gets fired. <gasps> oh my God, I lost my job. This is a musibah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Well, guess what? Fabima kasabat aydikum. Allah is teaching us personal responsibility. There is a balance in the Quran. There is a balance in our religion. And what is that balance? That when certain things happen to you, which are out of your control, they are from Allah. When there is a flood, a hurricane, you're driving, abiding to all the rules, and another car comes and rears you. That is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is not your fault. That was the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. But if you're driving like a maniac, or if a person inherits some disease, because it is in his or her genes. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a test. But if a person gets lung cancer as a result of smoking four packs a day, is that a musibah? That is a result of smoking those four packs a day. If a person inherits diabetes, he's living a healthy lifestyle. That is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if a person is just eating whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want, and continuously, and then they go to the doctor one day, and the doctor's like, Sir, I'm afraid to have to break it to you, but you have diabetes. And the patient says, "Uh, You know what? It runs in the family. What will the doctor's response be? No one runs in the family. That's why you have diabetes. So, When you have control over a situation, you don't get to throw everything on Qadr. And this is the balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us. But in either case, whether you inherited an illness, whether you acquired an illness because of your own doing, because of smoking, in either case, you still get to take a lesson from that. If something comes out of your control, it is a blessing. If something comes that's because of your own doing, it is a lesson. And if it is not death, you still have another chance to make it right. People, sometimes people become successful after going through troubles. Someone is lazy at work, they get fired, then the next time they won't do that. 
So, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those believers. That when things happen that are out of our control, we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And amongst those who take personal responsibility for our actions, and in either case, we learn a lesson from this. And we turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with tawbah, and we become better Muslims for the future. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ili muslimin. Fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafoorur rahim.